It's good to be in the Lord's house and good to have uh, you back in with us tonight in our evening service. It's always encouraging and a blessing when you see people come back for seconds on Sunday. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You glad you're here tonight? Say amen. 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 Glad you saved? Say amen. amen. Glad you're not going to hell? Say amen. amen. Well, I figured you'd shout the roof off the building then, but well, I'm glad I'm on my way to heaven. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Y'all just go ahead and sing that. I don't know what Brother David's got planned. Hey, we don't have no program, do we? Just go ahead and sing that. Glad I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. Talking with Jesus all along the way. Well, my heart gets so happy that I shout and sing night and day. I said I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. Problems and sorrows come my way But I paid no attention Just dropped the contention I had no time to stay Problems only weigh you down And cause sunny skies to turn gray I said I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. caught off guard well I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day walking with Jesus talking with Jesus all along the way well my heart gets so happy that I shout and sing night and day I said I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. Said I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus all along the way. Well, my heart gets so happy that I shout and sing night and day. I said I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. Get us out of here, thanks to heaven. I just shout amen. amen. Well, we're on our way. I don't know if it's going to be tonight or not. It'd be good if it was. <laughs> but we're on our way. Amen. Grab a song book, if you will, please, and turn to page number 204. 204. We'll sing to God be the glory. Let's sing all three verses. 
To God be the glory. When you get down to the course and where it says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. Let's do that. All right. Shout amen. amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. We have several specials tonight, so let's start out with the little kiddies. I think Madison and Mia is going to sing for us, so if you young ladies will come on up. Jesus loves me, this I know. Lord above all tells me so. Little ones to him below. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I heard something about a sheep and a cow, and that's all I got. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. All right. Suffer not the little children to come up. <laughs> Lord, let them sing. They may grow up to be professionals one day. Amen. Brother Buddy, you come on and sing for us, if you will, please. Sir. Uh, I was asking uh, Corey, when was last year that uh, the last Sunday before Taylor went off to uh, to Juilliard for the first time? Because I was actually when the pastor mentioned the date and time when he was saved, I wasn't saved in church, but I was saved because I uh, was being humble enough to come and yield and listen to what the Spirit was saying after many years of ignoring. Um, but I actually can, with the help of her mother, pinpoint when it was. It was that Thursday after he left for Juilliard in my bedroom that he touched me. And this is why I'm going to sing this song tonight. We'll get over that, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Brother Buddy, <clears throat> things happen when Jesus passes by. Well, I'm glad he passed by my life one day, opened my blinded eyes and let me see exactly what. <laughs> you know what Helen Keller said one time? She said, uh, someone asked Helen Keller, said, what's worse than being blind? She said, having sight and not being able to see. Well, I tell you, that is so true. 
Brother uh, Edward, where are you, brother? Brother Edward, you come on up and sing for us. And then Brother Leon, if you and Michelle will get something ready. And uh, Brother Leon, you can sing next, and then we'll get Sister Michelle or whoever. <laughs> You can say uh, God's here because uh, songs were sung, uh, Jesus Loves Me, and uh, Happy Birthday, Jesus, and He Touched Me, and now I'm uh, just glad there's something about that name. something about that name Master Savior Jesus like the fragrance after the rain Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away. But there's something about that name. Jesus, the mere mention of his name, can calm the storm, heal the broken, and raise the dead. At the name of Jesus, I've seen sin-hardened men melted, derelicts transformed, the lies of hope put back into the eyes of a hopeless child. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love and forgiveness. Arguments cease. I've heard a mother softly breathe his name at the bedside of a child delirious from fever. And I've watched that little body grow quiet and the fevered brow cool. I've sat beside a dying saint, her body racked with pain, who in those final fleeting seconds summoned her last ounce of ebbing strength to whisper earth's sweetest name. Jesus, Jesus. Emperors have tried to destroy it. Philosophers have tried to stamp it out. Tyrants have tried to wash it from the face of the earth with the very blood of those who claimed it. Yet still it stands. And there shall be that final day when every voice that has ever uttered a sound, every voice of Adam's race, shall raise in one great mighty chorus to proclaim the name of Jesus for in that day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Ah, uh, so you see, it was not mere chance that caused the angel one night long ago to say to a virgin maiden, His name shall be called Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you know there is something about that name. Jesus, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. But there's something about that name. Yes, amen. Oh, there is something about that name, Jesus. When it's whispered, well, oh, things would just go silent. Amen. Sister Michelle, are you ready? All right. Is Brother Leon going to sing too?
Okay. All right. Well, you come on up, sister, and then. <clears throat> thank the Lord for saving me and to me that's the greatest miracle and I want to say I've been asking him to help me have childlike faith um, for this new year and um, you know I feel like a lot of times that we don't receive miracles in our lives because we don't ask for them and, and believe in them and believe that he can touch and, and heal and I just want to ask him I've been asking him um, to help me grow in my faith this year I want to believe more and I want to pray more because I have the burdens, but I just I need that I need that touch to help me believe for my faith to be stronger. So I'm praying for miracles. You see the puzzle, not the piece. You see the forest, not the trees. You know what's best for me. Lord, you have bottled up my fears. You see my questions and my fears and the way it has to be. I know that there are others more deserving than I. I know that I'm not worthy, but you listen when I cry. And if this cross is mine to bear, I'll praise you anyway. But Lord, I could sure use a miracle today. words you feed the lilies and the birds you catch the sparrow when it falls and you know exactly where I am and I'm not questioning your plan there's a reason for it all I know that there are others more deserving But you listen when I cry And if this cross is mine to bear I'll praise you anyway But Lord, I could sure use a miracle today You turn the water into wine You heal the leper and the blind God, I know one word and when you spoke the deaf man heard so I know this is a little job for you I know that there are others more deserving praise you anyway but Lord I could sure use a miracle today this cross is mine to bear I'll praise you anyway but Lord I could sure use a miracle today Amen. 
Come on up, Brother Leon. But, Lord, I could sure use a miracle today. I think we all feel like that from time to time. We just feel like there's valleys everywhere we go. Everywhere we step, there's a valley. And all we can do is just look up and say, sometimes I'm unworthy, but, Lord, I could sure use a miracle today. And I'm thankful that the Lord is in the miracle-making business. Amen. Brother Leon, well, I'll turn it over to the pastor when he gets finished. There were so many others he could have chosen to follow him. Others with learning and greater distinctions to follow him. Men with authority and forceful ability men who knew how to speak and be heard I don't know exactly why I'm here at all but today I followed my Lord It was business as usual that day When I heard him say, follow me And I left all behind me that day When Jesus said, follow me I emptied myself of my old life completely with no thought that this could be wrong and today I still follow the steps of the master and I know I'm right where I belong He chose me. Thank you, Lord. He chose me. I could not say no when he said, Follow me, and you'll be a fisher. Of men. Amen. He chose me. Thank you. He chose me. I will not look back on those things left behind. For he chose me to follow him. Thank you, Lord. No, I will not look back on those things left behind. For he chose me to follow him.
Thank you, Brother Leon. Boy, I'm glad he chose me. I don't know about you. Amen. And I'm glad when he chose us. I know we've been saying this a lot the last few weeks. But we put us on the winning side. Amen. On the winning team. Amen. I said this before. How many of you have ever played in a game of sports where they chose sides? Amen. This one over here choosing. This one over here. I'm just curious. How many here tonight was the last one to be chosen? Yeah. You know why? They didn't think we were too good. <laughs> if no, nobody else won't take them, I will. That's what the Lord said. I'll take them. <laughs> I'll make something out of them. But I'm glad for the day he put me in the game. And I am praise the Lord today. It's, it's, this is good. I, I appreciate the songs. I appreciate the singers. I appreciate the testimony and the lives of those. I appreciate what the grace of God is able to do in a person's life. And every time I hear Brother Buddy testify and every time I hear him sing a song, boy, it just proves to me just how good God is and how real he is and how able he is. Amen. What a blessing and what a joy that is. All right, we're going to receive our offering tonight. Let's have the ushers to come forward and we'll see, receive our offering. Is that the jug out there? Yes. Is that there? Okay, good. Amen. One of the greatest joys that I think as a Christian is being able to give. I don't know where you've noticed it or not, but just a few weeks ago, we mentioned that we would like to Start paying some on our mortgage on our building. And one of our members came up with a suggestion. Just, you know, tell the people to add, I think it was a dollar or two dollars over and above what they normally give. And I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but I have. The offering has increased more than a dollar, more than several dollars. That's a blessing. That just shows me that people want to do what's right. All we got to do is just, just place the burden, lay the burden out. There'll be people that'll take it up. And I praise the Lord for that. Let's ask the Lord's blessing tonight to be upon the offering tonight, the gift and the giver, and just pray that God will just bless us in a special way. Brother Rick Mahealer, would you pray for us, and would you ask the blessing to be upon the offering tonight? Thank you, Jesus, yes. <clears throat> Granted, our Father, yes, help us, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs>
thank you, lady. Uh, uh, gentlemen. <laughs> the lady left the bench. <laughs> lady, thank you, men. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I appreciate our musicians. I believe Brother Danny got a little happy fingers tonight. He was uh, playing that guitar a little, a little strong tonight. I like that. Amen. We talked about that a moment ago during the assembly with the Easter drama. Hey, just do all you can, the best you can, as long as you can. Till Jesus comes. Amen. I don't want to be a used to be or a has been. Amen. I don't want to be a quitter. Well, I'm excited about things that are happening around this place. <clears throat> Dr. Ray's favorite verse is, this is the Lord's doing. Marvelous in our eyes. Um, I appreciate those that have took up the challenge to do some things. Open up into some new works, into some new ministries. What a blessing that is. You see Rick Rat on the front row tonight. Amen, buddy. Bless your heart. If all of us just would express our love for Jesus like Brother Rick Wright does sometimes, I'm telling you right now, folks, he'd get around the banks around here a lot of times. He gets out of the banks a lot of times anyhow, but uh, I appreciate... Uh, did I turn that thing on, Brother Jim? But I appreciate uh, the testimony of those. But um, I say I appreciate those. Uh, the, tonight, uh, Brother Robert and Sister Diane and Sister Frankie came wanted to talk to me and they want to start a senior citizen, senior citizens ministry. And I've been praying about that. I've been hoping that somebody would do that. And uh, they're going to have their first meeting on March the 10th. That's the second Saturday in March. They're going to try it quarterly to start with. And so they'll have it once a quarter. It'll be March the 10th, Saturday at 5 o'clock here at the church. And it's for those that are 55 and up. Hey, I got included in both of those things today. <laughs> the youth choir was 13 and up. <laughs> Amen. Senior citizen thing is 55 and up. I fall right smack down in the middle of both of those categories. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if it's going on at the church, I want to be a part of it. Now, I know I'm not going to sing in the youth choir. I know that, but. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll back it and I'll support it and I'll pray for it. But I just feel like that's the way it ought to be. And another thing that encourages me is this. <clears throat> Some of the other things that folks said they want to do and have already started doing. Uh, and that's a blessing. And uh, well, the devil just, he just stole my thought. Maybe I'll think of it in a minute. But he just stole my thought there. But... Um, you be much in prayer for these folk that want to step out and do some things because the devil will really battle and fight because he don't like things going on in the Lord's work. I know what it is now. I knew, if I, I knew you'd come back to me. But tonight we had our meeting on for the Easter drama that will be uh, on Friday night before Easter and Easter Sunday morning here at the church. And uh, Sister Teresa said we had the most tonight than we've ever had to come out and say they wanted to be a part and be a part of the Easter drama. Now, we need more people. And uh, pray that God will lay it upon your heart to help us and, and uh, that will be a blessing to you. And I know a lot of times when we do things, we pray that what we do will help other people. But I think when we do something for the Lord, it's not the other people that it helps as much as it helps ourselves. And... Uh, and it'll help you to be involved in, in your church and in the Lord's work. And, and like I say, I'm just excited. I just really believe this year, 2012, is, both, is just going to be a great year for Emmanuel Baptist Church. Encourage me when our visitors come back on Sunday night and come back on Wednesday night. Now, boy, that really excites me. And uh, let me just say we thank you so much for coming and being with us. Thank those that are able to visit with us occasionally. And you can come when you can, and it's always a joy to to have you in our services. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 20, this morning we uh, started in that portion of Scripture. Uh, I'd like to point out to you uh, 
tonight some things that are recorded in Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 16 and 17. And I promise I'm not going to hold you long tonight. You say, yeah, we've heard that before, preacher. <clears throat> but let's just, let's just make a, a truth. We'll just stay here till God tells us the time to go home. Amen. Amen. Um, the Lord's house sometimes is uh, the place that we want to get there the latest <laughs> and leave the earliest as we can. So uh, as long as the Lord does what he's supposed to do, then we'll leave blessed tonight. We talked about this morning adversity that we face. We talked about the reason that Jeremiah was a weeping prophet because of some of the things that went on in his life. And I mentioned that when we face adversity, it'll cause you either to get mad, it'll cause you to run, or it'll cause you to quit. And I didn't mention this this morning, so I'll take the opportunity to mention it now. I'm thankful that Jeremiah didn't do neither one. Amen? Just stick with the stuff. When I was in Bible college over at Tabernacle and Brother Ronnie went there and Brother Tim's checking into that. And I praise the Lord for that, the courses at the Bible college over there. But at that time when we went, they didn't offer the online courses. Uh, You had to have in class, that's the only thing that was offered. That probably was been the only thing I could have done because I'm not disciplined enough to sit down and have an online course class, but I hope Brother Tim can do that. It'll help you, amen? And, uh, but during the course of that time that we were in Tabernacle, I mean, those those boys that would uh, say they'd answer the call to preach and the Lord had led them to the Bible college, boy, they'd drop off like flies. I mean, you start out with a hundred maybe in the class and man, before you turn around, they might be 25 or 30 there. They just drop off like flies. And, um, I remember those teachers more than one time, more than a hundred times, would say this, get you some Elmer's glue and stick with it. Amen? Sometimes we have to do that. With that thought in mind, Brother Richard Hughes is going to be with us in the near future. And he was the English teacher over there at Tabernacle Bible College for a number of years, the whole time that I went. and Brother Ronnie went. Dr. Brother Hughes is a, is a good man. Um, has a good ministry, and he's going to be with us. I don't remember the date right offhand, but sometimes in the near future, Brother Richard Hughes is going to be with us, so you be much in prayer about that. But we just need some time just to make up our mind that uh, we're just going to stick with it. Amen? Endure the storm. Brother David sings that song, Impending Storms. Uh, they certainly going to happen, and but we just need to make up our mind that we're going to weather the storms, And do what we can to serve the Lord Jesus. And the only way we can do that, as I said this morning, is by being encouraged and helped and sustained by this word. Um, Our church membership won't do it. Our church attendance won't do it. Having perfect attendance in Sunday school for a number of years and you have those pins that they wear on their lapel to show you how many times you've attended, uh, how many consecutive years you went to Sunday school without mentioning Sunday school, that won't do it. But this word will. Now, some of those things you get at church will help you to stand. And that's the reason I say it's so important that we are in church as often as we can be. And every time the doors are open, if, if you know, unless you're providentially hindered by work and sickness sometimes, and sometimes different things come up, and I'm aware that we can't come, but uh, we just need to spend some time in the Lord's house and with God's people. And be attentive to the fact of what's going on in our classes and what's going on in our worship service. But in Jeremiah chapter 15, in verses 16 and 17, this is a uh, familiar passage of Scripture uh, that we'll read to you tonight. I'm sure it won't be anything fresh in you that you haven't already heard. But I want you to notice what it says in verses 15 down through verse number 17. We'll read those three verses tonight. The Bible says, O Lord, thou knowest, and remember me, and visit me, and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me, take me not away in the long suffering. Know that for your sakes I have suffered rebuke. The words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. 
For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy, of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for the reading of your precious word. We thank you, Lord, tonight for what our ears have heard and our hearts have already felt by the good singing that we've heard by your people. Thank you, Lord, for the testimony of witness of those that have shared with us tonight of just how the grace of God changed their lives. And, Lord, we're glad to know that God is still changing lives even today. And, Lord, as we bring the message tonight, I pray it will be a blessing. I pray it will be a strength. I pray it will be an encouragement to all that are in this building. And, Lord, if there be one here tonight that's lost, Lord, I pray this will be the time that they'll come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, if there's one of your children here tonight that may be discouraged, they may be going through some things, they may have some things going on in their life that they need prayer for, they need some help with. Lord, I pray tonight that they'll get that help. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. and Thank you, Lord, for blessing us in so many ways. Lord, I pray you'll just continue to do that which only you can do. And we'll praise you and thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank God for that. Though Jeremiah fought and went through a lot of things, he found that his strength came in the Word of God. Remember how he said just the verses that we read this morning that he had decided that he just was not going to speak anymore about the Lord. But it became so real to him and the fact that it was a burning in his heart and a burning in his bones that he said, I could not stay. And I want you to notice in these few verses that we read here for a brief minute tonight concerning the Word of God. And I've said this time and time again, and you know how we stand upon the Word of God and how we stand upon the principles, upon the firm foundation. One thing that blessed me this past Wednesday night when Brother Gary uh, shared with us, which is uh, Sister Vicky's dad, that he stood here and shared with us the work in the mission field and how that he encouraged Mark and Vicky to come and be a part of this church. And he said, the reason I did that, Pastor, he said, I told them, I know you're going to be led right. I know that they're going to preach the right gospel. And when people from the outside can see that, we that are members of Emmanuel Baptist Church ought to take pride in that, not to the point that we have proud, we're proud within ourselves, because the Bible says the Lord, Lord hates a proud heart. But proud to the fact of what God hath done for us. And the stand and the establishment that we have made through this work and through this ministry. And we've done it the way God has instructed us to do it. In the word of God. And it's not just for us. It's for everybody. It's for every church. Now I may shock you tonight, but not every church stands upon the truth. Not every church has good principles and good standards. Sometimes in some churches, anything goes. You can just do what you want to. And a lot of folk, they say, well, you know, I just don't like being a part of a small church. What they're saying is I like to get lost in the crowd. Think, hey, I'm praying one day this will become a large church. Hey, far as I'm concerned, it's a large church. It's a whole lot more than we started out with. And God keeps adding and God keeps sending. And I thank the Lord for that. But the whole thing that's going to keep us where we need to be is going to be the Word of God. When the devil fights us, and he will, and when the devil comes up against us, and he will, the defense that we have tonight is the book. It's not going to be because you have a good pastor, and I hope you have a good pastor. I try to do my best. I want to do my best. I want to be a blessing to you. I was thinking a moment ago as some of these folks that came up and sang for us a moment ago. I, I looked and I said, you know, I thank God. They're not, they're not going to, I'm not afraid that those people are going to embarrass their preacher because of their witness. Because of their testimony, because of their dress, and because of their way that they live for the Lord Jesus, that they're faithful. I appreciate that, and that is a blessing. But that all of it is sustained by the Word of God. If you'll notice in verse number 16, 
Jeremiah, uh, yeah, verse number 16, Jeremiah said, Thy words. I'm thankful tonight, the word of God here, as we look at this little two-word phrase, thy word, it tells me that the word of God is an inspired book. Every word, every jot, every tittle, every punctuation mark, as far as I'm concerned, is inspired of God. We stand upon the King James Bible for this reason. It is the Bible for the English-speaking people of today because the translation of the King James Bible came from the manuscripts. These other translations that that's coming down the path and down the road that we're faced with, and if you go to uh, go to, to a Christian uh, sh- uh, store and try to buy a King James Bible, you're going to find them in the little section. There'll be a section like this for them. And then them other translations, there'll be a whole wall of them. Say, so, well, preacher, I don't think we ought to be so narrow-minded that we have to be stuck on one thing. That's the way the devil gets in. This is the Word of God. It doesn't contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. It is the inspired, infallible, inerrant Word of God. If I didn't believe that the Word of God that we have before us tonight was inspired, I'd close it and never open it up again. You say, preacher, how do you know that it's a lie? Because you can see it moving sometimes. (laughs) You said, oh, come on now, preacher. I'm telling you, folks, it's an amazing thing to me. Hey, if you read a book, if you read a book and you go back and read that book again, you're going to read exactly the same thing that you read the first time. But it's amazing how that the Word of God, you can read one portion of Scripture today, pick it up and read another, and read the same portion the next day, and you get something totally different out of it. You say, well, preacher, I just don't understand. Can I just inform you? You're not going to understand at all. What you need to do is to believe the part that you do understand. And you need to strive to understand and study the Scripture. Don't, don't, don't wait for the preacher and the Sunday school teachers and those people like that to, to do your studying for you. Study for yourself. Learn some things on your own. You're not that dumb. <laughs> we got some smart people. Hey, if you're smart, raise your hand. Oh, man, some of you got your hand up. Mm, mm. I didn't say smart, Alec. I said, are you smart? Amen. But all of us are capable of learning. And it just takes study. And listen, you're not going to get everything that you're going to need in your Christian life an uh, hour on Sunday morning and an hour on Sunday night and maybe 45 minutes in Sunday school on Sunday morning and a maybe about an, at least, you know, an hour on Wednesday night. That's only about three and a half uh, hours, a little over three and a half hours. You're not going to get everything that you're going to need in your Christian life by just sitting and listening to what somebody else has to say about the Bible, even if they are telling you the truth. So we see it's the Word of God that sustains us because of the inspiration of the Word. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16. It says, all Scripture. I believe the word all. Anybody tell me what the word all means in the Greek? Y'all are Greek scholars. All, it means all. That's the reason I said that I believe even the punctuation marks and, and, and the verses and the chapter divisions are inspired. Because before this Bible was translated, there was no chapter divisions and there was no verses divisions. So tonight, if I'd got up here before this was translated and put in chapter and verse form, I would have been preaching before you would ever even got to the verse. Because there was no chapters and no verses. So I thank the Lord that those have been separated and those have been... And I believe God led in that. I really do with all my heart. But the Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's the reason that it's so important that we are sustained by the Word. Now, let's look at this verse right quick 
in 2 Timothy 3.16. If you'll notice the word inspiration, the word inspiration just simply means that it is divinely breathed. These are exactly the words that God wanted for, wanted us to have. Some people say, well, how about the lost books? There is no lost book. Amen? Hey, there is no law, there's other books that some people say, well, how about the book of Maccabees? Well, how about them? You better be worried about Mark, Luke, and John than you had about the book of Maccabees. But do we see that the Bible tells us in the word inspiration just simply means that it is divinely breathed. If you'll notice here, and the Bible says being divinely breathed, that it is profitable. It's a profitable thing to study and to read the Bible. Uh, when When you base your faith, when you base your salvation, when you base your experiences with God, upon the scriptures and upon the word of God, and when you base your decisions upon the scriptures and the word of God, you'll never have to back down or back off of that. And we know that it's profitable. And it says it's profitable for doctrine. Now, doctrine just simply means that it's profitable for instruction. There's some doctrinal truths in this Bible that are not to be changed. Well, none of the Bible's to be changed. But there's so many things that have been changed concerning the Bible in some of these translations that you don't know what to believe and what not to believe. You don't know what to trust in and you don't know what to believe in. So you have to be careful. But the Bible says that it's profitable for us, for us to be instructed concerning the doctrine. And then also it says that it's profitable not only for doctrine, but it's profitable for reproof. And the word reproof would mean this, conviction. Conviction. Do you know what conviction is? Uh, But most of you do. Probably all of you know what conviction is. When you have the word of God in your heart and you hear the preaching of the word and the teaching of the word, and when you realize there's things in your life, it'll show you where you're wrong. It won't paint a pretty picture and say, well, that's okay. We can, we, we can, uh, it's just, it's just a mistake. No, it's sin. It's sin. We tried to whitewash it. We tried to sugarcoat it. We tried to make it better. Hey, we're all just those sinners. Just as sorry as sorry can be. But thank God for the fact that through the preaching of the word of God that's breathed by God, it's profitable for us to receive it as reproof and for reproof and the convictions that we have in our life, we can get those things right with the Lord. Then not only that, but it says for correction. Now, just to keep an alliteration of instruction and, and, and conviction and then reformation. Now, when I'm talking about reformation, I'm not talking about turning over a new... Let me put it in language that you'll further understand concerning uh, the, the, the correction. Straighten up. Amen? <laughs> hey, just straighten up. How many of you ever told your children, you better straighten up or you're going to get it? You probably had that said to you also when you were growing up as a child. So that's basically what the Word of God's telling us when it's preached to us and it's profitable for our correction. God's just telling us, you better straighten up. Amen? And then it says not only in correction, but how about it's profitable for instruction. It's educational. Since I've been saved, I've learned a lot of things. Because I've been educated, so to speak, in a lot of things. And you have too. If you've been saved for any length of time in your Christian life, there's a lot of things that you've learned since you've been saved that you didn't know before you got saved. You know the things to do and the things not to do. So we see that the Bible tells us that it's all for profit. And it talks about all the things that we just mentioned to you. It's talking about that all these things are in righteousness. 
Now, the word righteousness means the condition that is acceptable to God. Doing that which is right. That's all that righteousness means. It's just simply doing that which is right. And we have no righteousness within ourselves. But we have been declared righteous by the Lord Jesus Christ of His righteousness. That's what the word justification means. That we have been declared righteous. Some say just as if I had never sinned. But the fact of the matter is we have sinned and we did sin. But thank God He declared us righteous through the righteousness of God Himself, His Son. And that's what is acceptable unto the Lord, is for us to be accepted of the Lord. Now, the word inspiration, of course, comes from the word inspire. And when we think about the word inspire concerning a Christian, there's a lot of things that we could mention tonight. But I'd just like to mention about three right quick concerning what we should be inspired to do. Number one, I think that we should be inspire, inspired to worship. We ought to be excited about coming to the church house. Not to see what so-and-so's doing, not to see what's going on, see what the latest gossip is. We shouldn't come for that, but we should come inspired in order that we might get to worship the Lord. I heard a preacher say the other day on the radio, he was talking and preaching, and he said this, he said, uh, somebody said, uh, you, you've got to, why, why do you have to go to church? What it was is, I think he had a brother or somebody that come down and visited with him, and he wanted to go play golf on Sunday or something like that. I can't remember. He said, I, I knew it was going to take him out of church, and I believe it was he wanted to go play golf. And he said, I can't go play golf. I, I'm going to church. He said, well, you know, it won't miss you to hurt one Sunday. Huh. That's all the devil wants you to do is miss one Sunday. He can get in if you let him do that. But that gentleman told him, he said, look, it's not that I got to go to church. He said, thank God I get to go to church. And that's why we ought to look at it. We get to go to church. And we don't have to sing in the choir. We get to sing in the choir. We don't have to play these instruments up here, men. But you get to play those instruments to the glory of God. We don't have to go to Sunday school. But thank God we get to go to Sunday school. Amen. We don't have to do all these things that we say that people say, well, you have to do, you have to. Hey, we get to do it. And we should be inspired to worship. The Bible tells us in Psalms 29 and verse number 2 that we should come and worship in the beauty of holiness. The Bible encourages us to do that. And we should, it should inspire us that when we get up on Sunday morning, hey, we get to go to church. We get to be a part. We get to go in and sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. We still get to sing There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. We still get to hear John 3.16. We still get to hear Romans 10, uh, 8 and 9. We still get to hear the part where it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we see that we're inspired to worship. Not only are we inspired to worship, but I believe also tonight, folks, we as children of God, we are inspired to witness. When's the last time you told somebody about Jesus? The Bible says in Acts chapter 1-8 that we are to be witnesses. And I believe that we ought to tell the story. Go tell in 2012. It's what Sister Teresa came up with. How many has told somebody about Jesus this week? Hey, it's close enough that we can ask this question. How many has told somebody about Jesus this year? Amen. We have tracks that we keep out there... On the table out there, we have tracks back in the, on the counter across from the restrooms. We have a drawer back there that has tracks in it. There's all kind of tracks. But let me ask you this question. Don't answer it to me. Don't answer, just answer it to yourself. How many gospel tracks have you passed out this year? Man, your, your pin drop. How many gospel tracts did you pass out last year? You say, well, preacher, I, I'm just not very good at that. I, I, I just don't know what to say. I just don't know how to talk to people. Well, how do you go into a restaurant and order your food? 
You point at it. <laughs> Give me one of them. Well, you better be careful. You don't know what you might be eating. You say, that's, that's not a... Well, you know, let me just say this. All you have to do is just tell that person what he did for you. Amen? If we get a new car, we tell people about it. We tell people about our grandchildren. We tell people about our children. We tell people about our, our homes. We tell people about our jobs. We tell people about our promotions. We don't have any problem with telling people about that. But when's the last time we witnessed and told somebody about Jesus? You see, you might be the reason that someone hears the gospel and gets saved. One of the greatest crowns you can win in the scriptures is the soul winner's crown. And if I'm not mistaken, I I think that's the crown of rejoicing. Why? Because the Bible says that even the angels in heaven rejoice. When a sinner gets saved. You ever heard that song? It's an old song. It's been several years old. But a song entitled, It Made News in Heaven When I Got Saved. Can you imagine what went on and what happened? Every time a person gives their heart and life to Christ. Oh, we rejoice and we have a good time in the church. And we can hoop and holler and praise the Lord. But I'm telling you, when the angels start rejoicing. Woo! Can you imagine that? Man, you folks look like y'all bored to death. But we're inspired to worship. We're inspired to witness. And I know you ain't going to like this one. We should be inspired to work. Hey, this is the Lord's W-O-R-K. Work. Dobie Gillis, Maynard G. Krebs used to say, when they said work, he'd say, work! <laughs> like, hey, I want no part of that. <laughs> and you know, that's the way a lot of people are in our church today. They don't want no part of the work. You know, it's a hands-on thing, folk. Uh, it, it's, not just, it's not just preaching. It's not just singing. It's not just playing the instruments. But the grounds has got to be kept up. The building has to be clean. The maintenance on the building has to be kept up. But Don Johnson told me the other day, he said, well, he's out here working, he's putting that tile up on the wall back there in the, in the kitchen area. And he said, Preacher, y'all just keep something going on all the time, don't you? I said, well, we try to. It's a work. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse number 3, it talks about the work of faith and the labor of love. Someone, I, don't, I can't remember if it was while we was meeting a while ago in, in the Easter drama, uh, somebody was talking about their work, working on their faith. I, I, don't, I don't remember who, who did that and when it was. I can't remember, but just recently talking about working on their faith. Michelle, I knew that. She just sang it. (laughs) See how easily we forget? But I remembered how that is. And sometimes we have to work on our faith. But let me just say tonight that once again, our faith is sustained by the Word of God and the inspiration that comes through the Word of God. Let me just skip on to another one right quick. Not only do we see inspiration... But I want you to notice the third word in that verse, or the fourth word in that verse, where it says, found. Thy words were found. We should be searching. You say, preacher, why should we do that? Well, consider the things that you have found to be true When you search the scriptures. How many times have you read the Bible and and maybe read it several times and maybe read a certain portion of scripture several times and it goes back to what I said a moment ago. But you can read it once again. You say, I've never seen that before. Consider some of those things that you found. Think about what 
Jeremiah found when he saw and he read the Scriptures. It was the things that he found that helped to sustain him. And the things that I find in the Scripture that helped and sustains me is the fact that the blood still cleanses from all sin. That hadn't changed. Not going to change, hallelujah. We see the blood. Not only the blood, but how about the blessings? We have the promises in God's Word that He said He would load us daily with benefits. I, just in a picture of my mind, in my imagination, and sometimes my imagination can run away with me, but every time I read that verse, I can just almost see in a wagon coming up the road and then just hanging off the sides. Blessings that God loads us with daily. Not weekly, not monthly, not yearly, but the psalmist David says we are blessed daily. And I found that through the scripture. Oh yeah, I've heard it preached. I've heard people testify, but it was made real through the word of God. Then the Bible tells us, not only do we find the blood and blessing, but the Bible says that we find life. And not just life, but eternal life, abundant life. John chapter 5 and verse number 39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The reason I know tonight that I've got eternal life is not because of what some preacher told me, but because of what's in this book. Amen? A lot of times people say, well, do you believe this, that, or the other? And that person might say, yeah. Well, why do you believe that? Well, that's what the preacher said. You better be careful with some of the things if you believe what the preacher said. Now, Brother David sings that song, you better listen to that preacher. Now, if he's telling you the truth, you better listen. But we see the Bible says we have life. Not only have we found life in the Scriptures, but the Bible tells us that we have found liberty. In Galatians 5, 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Thank God for the liberty. Another thing I find in the Scriptures is love. Oh, how he loves you and me. Let me try to hurry and just give you the rest of them real quick, not try to spend a lot of time on them. Just try to get through it. Then we see... Not only did he see the inspiration, not only did we see the searching, but you notice in that verse where it says, the words were found and I did eat them. That speaks of satisfaction. Amen? If there's anything I hate, is to sit down at the table and there not be enough taters. Amen. I mean, uh, the, the amount is so small, you're afraid to get any. It might be beans. It might be taters. It, it might be fried chicken. Lord, help us. We ever sit down to the table. We ain't got enough fried chicken to go around. But Jeremiah said, I did eat them. In other words, Jeremiah said, boy, I got satisfied. This morning... Where Brittany at? No, there she is. She came up to me. She said, "Preacher, somebody needs to go to the grocery store around here." She said, "There ain't nothing here to eat." <laughs> I said, "We're going to feed you with the word," but that ain't what she was looking for. She's looking for a steak biscuit or something. By the way, there's a cold one back there in the refrigerator. But we need to be satisfied. The Bible says in Psalm 34, 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, how do we taste of Him? Through the Word. We can't literally taste the Lord. But I'll tell you what. You can taste His goodness through the Scriptures and through the Word. And the verse didn't stop there. The, the verse that I just quoted said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And the word blessed there just simply means happy. I'm glad I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with the Savior. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Don't have to look for another way. I'm satisfied with the Savior. I'm not only satisfied with the Savior, but I'm satisfied with the Scriptures. And boy, we've already sort of pointed that out uh, uh, tonight of how that we're satisfied with the Scriptures. And then let me just say also, I'm satisfied with my stand. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 1, it says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for... My joy and crown, so, my joy and crown, so steadfast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I'm satisfied with my stand upon the Word of God. If there's anything that I want Emmanuel Baptist Church to be, I want us to be, I want us to stand firm and I want us to be spiritually sound. Amen? You know, a lot of times we get and listen, I'd love for the building to be packed out tonight. I'd praise God for that. But let me just say tonight that we need some time to focus on quality. Sometimes more than quantity. Now the more we get in, the more we can maybe get to a good quality. Preach to them and share the gospel with them. But thank God for the fact that Jeremiah said I eat. He was satisfied. Then, uh, next of all, number, number four, right quick. Let me hurry. I see that Jeremiah said, not only did he eat them, he says, and thy word unto me, the joy and rejoicing of my heart. The word's rejoicing. Throughout the scriptures, the Bible tells us to rejoice in the Lord. Always rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 8, says, whom having not seen, you love. In whom though, now you see him not, yet believing, Yea, rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory. If we can rejoice and not see him physically, you just think what it's going to be like when we get over yonder. What a day that will be. We need to rejoice in the Lord. We need to rejoice in our salvation. And we, the, the, the psalmist David said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. The joy of what God has done for us. And then we need to rejoice in our service. The Bible says in Psalm 100, serve the Lord with gladness. What a great thing it is to serve God. Then we see the privilege that we have. The Bible there uses the verse called. I'm glad I've been called out. I'm glad I heeded the call. Then how about the separation? And I'm hurrying to finish up. There's a separation there where it says, and set not. There's some places when you get saved, if you're going to be sustained by the Word of God, you're going to have to not take part in. There'll be some places you can't go and some people you can't go those places with. And then how about our testimony? In verse number 17 of that chapter that we read to you, Jeremiah said, I sat alone. Sometimes you may have to be alone. And establish your good testimony. And just stand firm upon the things that sustain us in the blessed word of God. I'm glad that's what sustains us, is his word. And you don't have to worry about the word going away. Because it tells us in the Bible that his word is forever settled in heaven. So we're going to have the word that he comes back. Then we're going to be with the Word. Amen. Amen. What a day that's going to be. Trust the Lord. Trust in His Word. Stand firm upon His promises. And you'll have a profitable Christian life. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed.